Hello everyone, welcome to class 7 of manual software testing training. In this class, I am going to discuss about different test case design techniques. Okay, and what we are going to start with is, say for example, let's go back. So all of the test case design techniques in detail. And the first thing that we are going to start is the black box or specification based techniques and equivalence partitioning and boundary value analysis are the first and foremost thing to understand and very, very important concepts, right? Now, knowingly, unknowingly, if you're already working in the software testing project, if you're already employed, you might be using these design when designing your test cases okay but then knowing formally these approaches will definitely make you a very good tester okay so equivalence partitioning and boundary value analysis let's understand what exactly it is all about okay when we say equivalence partitioning okay it is a black box test design technique and it can be applied at all levels of testing right now, what is the idea behind equivalence partition is to divide the partition of a group of te test conditions into a set that can be considered same by the software. What does this whole statement mean? Say, for example, I have a text box on a particular web page, simple text box. Okay, that text box accepts only the numbers, only numbers from 1 to 10 okay so only numbers that are accepted are from 1 to 10 now if i have to go ahead and say to you can you create the equivalence or uh, equivalence partition or partition of groups that are valid and invalid in this particular case or that will help me to basically identify test cases uh, or data for the test cases based on the valid and invalid partition okay so because this text box only accepts number from 1 to 10 so that means if i go ahead and type in anything that is less than 1 or anything that is above 11 uh, above 10 should give me an error right so this clearly shows that if i want to partition this whole logically in terms of input criteria the valid partition is 1 to 10 right that's the valid partition anything any number between 1 to 10 will be allowed to be inputted there okay or when you submit it won't throw an error anything above 10 is an invalid partition anything below 1 is an invalid partition right so if with this particular criteria of this particular text box that accepts only 1 to 10 there are three partitions right anything less than 0 anything above 10 and the valid partition is 1 to 10 right so this is what partitioning is all about or equivalence partitioning because for the software it doesn't matter right the this is the logical grouping of valid and invalid right so anything that now you want to test valid you use numbers from 1 to 10 and anything that you want to test invalid you use anything above 10 whatever it is number character whatever and then anything below 0 below one so this is the basic concept of equivalence partition so anywhere you have any sort of these scenarios in your application you want to test something there will be certain criteria to those text boxes or there will be you know certain criteria so we'll discuss more on that right so this is the very basic idea behind equivalence partition to logically divide the software or the functionality that is being shown to you into valid part partitions and invalid partitions based on the input that is accepted or the criteria that is being acceptable or not acceptable okay now in this case we need to test just one condition from that partition as it is assumed that all the values in that partition will be treated in the same way right now because we have divided this logical part Partition, then in that case we just have to test up one particular criteria that should be enough because software treats all of the values in that partition in the same way right so that's where if I have three partitions now with the equivalence partitioning criteria I will just go ahead and test or have three test cases for this particular text box which accepts the numbers from 1 to 10 so anything between 1 to 10 anything in the invalid partition less than 1 and anything in the invalid partition which is greater than 10 right so three test cases with this criteria of equivalence partitioning should be good enough to achieve that logical segregation right so this is where these test design techniques are going to help you to design effective test cases that will give you maximum coverage now say for example you are testing this text box randomly will you test all the numbers from 1 to 
10 and then how many invalid numbers you will test from up above 10 and how many invalid characters right alphabets above and and then how many invalid numbers below one so it's a nightmare right you can't test everything so that's where this logical partitioning will definitely going to help you that if you have tested one from this valid partition one from this invalid one and one from other invalid one because there are three partitions one from each is good enough to test right and because the software is going to behave same way it doesn't matter you use something else okay now these conditions may not always be true right it is not said that always it is going to be 100 percent and true but it will help you to achieve or you know the testers can use better partitions and test and also test some more conditions within those partitions to confirm that the selection of that partition is fine now with this partition i have set three right but then alphabet you can test with the alphabet you can test with the special characters right so this gives you a clear guidance right and this gives you a clear guidance what all test you need to do and then if there is any missing add that as well right rather than saying or test all 1 to 10 then test you know how many numbers above 10 how many numbers below 10 that's a nightmare right so equivalence partition will give you a good sort of indication in that particular case now let's go uh, equivalence partitions are also known as equivalence class so if somebody says equivalence class or partition this is same so the next example here is if say for example so discount is very common thing right discount in e-commerce or stores right anywhere you see discount you can obviously you know apply these partition and bva concept which we'll cover later so equivalence partition say for example there is a store in the city or e-commerce store that is offering discount based on certain purchase criteria so if the purchase is between the range of five dollars and fifty dollars no discounts anything above 50 up to 200 is five percent discount anything above 200 to 500 is ten percent discount anything above 500 up to the maximum purchase limit is 15 percent discount right and maximum purchase limit could be something whatever they said right so now to test this particular thing equivalence partitioning is the best idea okay you will definitely apply it right knowingly and unknowingly if somebody asks you to test it you will say okay let me test something in the five percent discount let me have a purchase which is above 200 and see what what uh, discount is being applied let me test above 500 and see what discount has, has been applied but if you formally define it in the equivalence partition it will be much more easier for you to come up with the test cases right so if with this example you have to define different partitions so the first valid partition is the purchase between 5 to 50 right so valid partition no discount so any purchase that is of five dollar or up to fifty dollar no discount should be applied that's the another valid partition right another valid partition is of five percent discount wherein anything above 50 so i've rounded it to the two digits after the uh, dollar value okay and then up to 200 dollars is five percent third valid partition is for 10 percent discount fourth invalid uh, fourth valid partition for the uh, is for the 15 percent discount right which is up to the max dollar value and then anything above max allowed purchase limit there will be a max purchase uh, uh, limit right so it, it's not that you you can order something you know of a million dollar from from amazon there, there will be some criteria so if there is a criteria of max purchase limit or max purchase dollar spend then that is invalid anything above max plus whatever dollar value if customer has added that into the card right and tries to go ahead and you know check out they should get some sort of error so that's the invalid partition anything above max plus whatever dollars and anything less than five dollars okay so minimum purchase that is being that should be allowed minimum cart amount is five dollars so anything less than five dollars if customer has added some items which are less than five dollars they shouldn't be allowed to purchase or check out right because minimum spend is five dollars so now with this guided approach of equivalence partition you clearly know that i have one invalid partition here and then four valid partition and fifth invalid partition which is max plus whatever dollar value the, the 0 0.01 dollar value anything above max is invalid partition so now if i have to go ahead and document test cases I have six test cases to basically cover all of these different criteria, right? And then also go ahead and think, is there anything more that I, that I can do to do some sort of negative test, okay? So this is what the equivalence partition is all about, okay? And how you are going to go ahead and do the equivalence partitioning for any of the scenarios, okay? Now, moving next, 
boundary value analysis now equivalence partition and boundary value analysis go hand in hand okay they they are used together most of the time so you do equivalence partition and then based on that you come up with the equivalence partition test cases right and then you also add the boundary value analysis scenarios and test cases just along with that okay now when we say boundary value okay so equivalence partition is kind of logical partition right as the name suggests now boundary value analysis is analyzing the boundary value of what of the partitions that we have done okay so that's what the boundary value analysis is and ep and bva or equivalence partitioning equivalence class partitioning and boundary value analysis go hand in hand that's the whole reason because every partition will have a boundary value you know the lowest boundary and the upper boundary so that's where boundary value analysis comes in picture so a boundary value is any input or output value on the edge of an equivalence partition okay so if you go ahead and see it here so any value that is on the edge of the partition so if i say this valid partition 5% so what is the value that is at the edge of the partition this is 50.01 right as soon as this 01 becomes 50.50 it is no more this partition 5% partition it is this no discount partition right because 50, up to 50 dollar no discount so this boundary value is the lower boundary upper boundary is 200 anything above 200 is another partition which is 10% discount right so that's what the boundaries are okay and that's where these partitions help you to identify boundaries very easily so if we talk about here so boundary value analysis based on is based on testing at the boundaries between partition okay it is at the boundaries between the partition Boundary value, analysis, uh, boundary value analysis is a black box test design technique where test cases are designed by using boundary values. Okay, it is used in range checking and to apply boundary value analysis, you need to make, you need to take maximum minimum values from valid partition together with first or last value respectively in each of the invalid partition adjacent to valid partition. Okay, what this means is if we go back so the valid from the valid partitions all the boundary values that you take right to formulate your test case and then the first and last first value from the invalid partition and then first here value first value from the invalid partition because then the last value you are not aware right i mean invalid partition max plus 0 0.01 you are okay this is invalid okay but then what is the max invalid value you don't know right because this invalid partition can go up to any number so you just take one from here one from here and then all the boundaries from the valid partition so what does it does it make in terms of test cases of the boundary value if you consider that so one test case for this value, two from here, two from here, two from here, two from here. So eight, nine, ten test cases from the boundary value analysis specification, right? So a test case for five dollar, a test case for purchase of fifty dollar, right? Because these are at the boundary. Then a test case for the fifty point zero one, a test case for two hundred dollars, a test case for two hundred and one uh, point zero one five hundred, right? So you will have a purchase for each of these dollar amount, and that will be your test case as per boundary boundary value analysis as per equivalence partition you have created how many test cases one two three four five six okay so any value between this valid partition so anything between five and fifty any value between this fifty and two hundred any purchase amount between two hundred to five hundred any purchase amount between five hundred to max right and then anything above invalid partition which is max plus zero one anything above there anything below you know this five dollar value so this together equivalence partition six test cases and another another test cases that have been formulated based on the boundary value analysis gives you a defined sort of very defined structure of the test case or a very defined number of test cases that yes i have covered all the partitions as well as the boundaries and then from there are you can there on you can think about other scenarios that might be required in this particular functionality to test okay so here let's say we are going to do another example so suppose you have a text field which is kind of similar that i took so you have this valid uh, which accepts value between one to thousand so the valid partition will be like one to thousand and then equivalence partitions are so this is valid anything above thousand is invalid anything below one is invalid right so three equivalence partitions right and the boundary values are one thousand thousand one okay and zero right so these are the boundary values so one thousand from valid partition and then zero and thousand one from invalid partitions right so these are the boundary values that are applicable in this particular case similar to what we have seen 
here right so two boundary values from each valid partitions and one from invalid at the top one invalid from the bottom invalid partition and that makes your boundary values right so this is basically the boundary value analysis and equivalence partition now another example so same thing store offers this discount right minimum cart amount is five so what are the boundary values here you can see that we can identify four valid equivalence partitions and two invalid so the boundary values are if i talk about 550 same thing right same same example or same exa uh, same exactly same that i have explained in the previous sli slide so eight boundary values here in four valid partitions one invalid and one here so 10 total boundary boundary value analysis or boundary values that need to be tested okay now here if you see how you are going to basically structure this all together right so test condition is purchase amount and then you have the discount percentage based on the condition you want to come up with the discount percentage so you first write down what are the valid partitions so the valid partitions are four which you have written here and then what are the valid discount partitions you have no discount five percent ten percent right and then invalid partitions you have written as well and then similarly here you have written in the discount percentage in valid partition any other value non integer non interest calculated right then you come up with the valid boundaries so any all these boundaries that are there right so max so eight valid boundaries have been written here okay so if you write it in the tabular format it will give you a more structured approach to just go ahead and quickly write the test cases or test scenarios out of it then in terms of valid boundaries of discount percentage now discount percentage is dynamic based on this purchase amount you, you can't you know update it or change it so this is not applicable then invalid boundaries for discount percentage it is again it is fixed amount it is basically calculated based on the business logic of the purchase so that is not applicable you, you put not applicable in this sheet here in this column right and then in the invalid boundaries you put the boundaries that are invalid for the same purchase amount so now in the tabular format you can basically see that it is much clear to formulate your test cases okay now why you need to do both equivalence partition and boundary value analysis because testing only boundaries that does not give much confidence okay so if you are testing only boundaries it is of no use right because we are testing just extreme values of the partition you also need to test something in between the partition right and then um, you test something in the boundary in between and that combination is achieved when you use equivalence partition boundary value together and add test cases from both to formulate your testing um, scope right so it is recommended that partition should be tested separately from boundary values and if you want to be more thorough then start with valid partition testing then invalid and then valid boundaries and finally invalid boundary okay so basically with ep and bva your test case count won't be anyways too big okay because it's kind of logically division and then based on that you are coming up with your test case which is a more structured approach to design your test case and document your test case right so using both is really important to get a good coverage if if there is something missing you have to think about it and document more scenarios okay now the next concept is about the decision table testing all right so what exactly are the decision tables so decision tables are the a combination of input with their associated output okay and this is also known as cause effect table so what we'll do is let's stop here for equivalence partition boundary value analysis and in the next class i'll be covering about the decision table and other test design technique all right so that's all for this class i'll see you in the next class thank you